This chapter is over an hour and 16 minutes long, but I do think it's interesting as speculation. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. I won't put a whole bunch of comments on it, but I will point out things that are similar uh, so that maybe it might make some sense. Uh, but uh, there won't be any other comments. Okay. Anyway, uh, Coleman Bible, Book 5, Chapter 34. It seems to cover the whole 18th dynasty. And the 18th dynasty is classified as the first dynasty of the New Kingdom period. It boasts several of Egypt's most famous pharaohs, including Tutankhamun, uh, the Thutmosed dynasty for the four pharaohs named Thutmose. Its famous pharaohs of that dynasty include Hepshetset, Akhenaten, his queen, Nefertiti, and then there was King Nefenfraten, uh, which I assume they believe is the iconic Queen Nefertiti. MAN 3419 Men may ask in days yet to dawn how it came about that the flame of glory died in Egypt, how her grandeur passed away into dust, how, when man had climbed so high, he could climb no longer. But there is no simple cause. The seeds of degeneration lie dormant in every nation, and every man, as the man, so the nation. These seeds are as weeds which spring up when the cultivated soil is neglected, when it is tended with indifference. The road to greatness is for nations, as for each man, a hard and stony one. Greatness is a gift requiring constant effort to retain. When men decline the effort, greatness departs. Greatness and glory will abide only in the habitations of the worthy. They depart when no longer treated as honored guests. What are justice and truth today? They are no more than words mumbled by the lips. But once they were an inextinguishable flame burning within the hearts of men. What is left of honor when men cease to regard it as more than an empty symbol? It is like the lyre in the hand of a man with blistered fingers, or as the flute played by one with scabby lips. The instruments remain, but where are the musicians? Without the musicians, where are the melodies? M.A.N. 3420 In the land of Egypt, periods of righteousness have come and gone, like ripples passing over a quiet pond. There have been periods of material greatness, ripples of longer duration, but they have not been at one with the ripples of righteousness. Throughout all times, there have been two visible forms of worship, with their many variations, that of the highborn and that of the people. Now, they have been blended for many generations. The worship of the high God and the knowledge of the sacred mysteries kept hidden by the enlightened ones, and the twice-born were behind both and veiled within them. Where else could these things be better concealed?